Hi, I'm Jordan from Kentner Creative and in this video I want to show you two different options for getting power out of a lighting fixture with a PowerCon pass-through. Now before we start, just as a general rule, you only want lighting equipment to be sharing the same circuit with other lighting equipment. So this means that you shouldn't be using the power pass-through to go to a projector or audio equipment or speaker or anything like that. You should only be connecting lighting equipment. Now this rule comes from the old days where we used to use dimmers because a dimming circuit would affect the power and stuff, but now in like current day it's still a best practice just in terms of keeping accountability. So the lighting guys are in charge of their own power, the video guys are in charge of their own power, and the sound guys are in charge of their own power. Now, that being said, sometimes you might have a truss at an event or an area of an event where you only have one 15 amp lighting circuit. So you power your first fixture Edison to PowerCon, and that works great. And you can do a bunch of these fixtures in a row by using a PowerCon to PowerCon cable, which is good. And this is the way that we did it for a long time. But what happens when you only have a single circuit, you're out of tri-taps and, and power distro, and you need to get back to Edison? So we had a bunch of these cables made up which go PowerCon to Edison. Now this will save you in a bind. So you can power up your original fixture and then take the gray PowerCon out, out of the fixture. This gets it back to Edison and then you can power your second fixture. Now when you're doing this you need to make sure that you have a handle on like the wattage that you're pulling on the circuit itself. So this is fine to do no matter what. You can see that it's powering up as long as there's enough uh, headroom in the circuit. So if you're overdrawing, say that this is the, you know, this is the last fixture that now puts this power linking combination over 15 amps, you can actually damage the fixtures as well. So before you start doing this, you need to make sure that you know how many amps and how many watts and all that that each fixture is drawing to make sure that you're operating safely. But other than that, this little cable here will save you a lot of times when you're trying to power link between different types of fixtures. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you have any if you have any comments, just leave a comment in the comment section below. Thanks.